How are we doing? How are we doing? This is Destination Denver, Colorado, and today is moving to Colorado in 2024 the right move for you? Let's talk about it, starting right now. All right, this is Destination Denver, Colorado. I'm your host, Jimmy Everett, and listener. If you're interested in learning all the ins and outs, pros and cons to moving to or around the Denver metro area, then this is a channel for you. So that subscribe button and notification icon you see on your screen, make sure you click on that as I'm dropping new videos for you each and every week. And as much as I try to be a little informative here on camera, I'm also a licensed mortgage broker covering the entire state of Colorado and team with some of the Front Range's most talented realtors. And we're helping people move here each and every day. So the number and email you see, know that I am always the person answer your phone calls, answer your texts, answer your emails. They're winning if you need me. Now that we're done with that fun-filled stuff, let's get to what we're here for. And that is, is moving to Colorado in 2024 the right move for you? All right, so first and foremost, as we jump into this video, I, I wanna make sure we're clear that the title of this video is about moving to Colorado, not specific to Denver. So while we're gonna talk about Denver to an extent, we're gonna talk about the metro area, we're gonna talk about the state as a whole, some of the things that really bring people here. The reason I wanna mention this is so often when I make a video that's a bit more vague about the state per se and not specifically Denver, People want to look at, well, you didn't mention this, this, and this about Denver. Don't worry about that. Next week, I'll have that video for you. But for now, let's think about this state as a whole. And we're also going to look at some good things and bad things. We're going to really lean into the good in the beginning. We'll cover some bad at the end. So definitely stick around for that. And we're going to cover both good and bad. We're going to lean in with some good in the beginning, end with some bad, probably end on a high note, if you will. So let's jump right into it. The number one reason you might want to consider moving to Colorado in 2024 is the robust economy that Colorado enjoys. And this economy is split amongst a pretty diverse amount of industries. You've got tech, you've got aerospace, finance, education, healthcare, and these businesses range. You've got a lot of entrepreneurship in Colorado. So there are a lot of businesses built within Colorado. In fact, there's a website called uh, builtincolorado.com that I would suggest anybody looks at if they want to work for an independent company. But you're going to see that going north up to Fort Collins, running south all the way through Colorado Springs and Pueblo. That's on the front range. Certainly plenty of mountain towns with industrial opportunities, you know, different business opportunities, I should say, not necessarily industrial, but the economy of Colorado is strong and growing. And it's not just centered in Denver as it may have been in years previous. And I mentioned builtincolorado.com. That's really geared around tech industries. And tech is having a boom in Colorado, no doubt about it. Now, you're going to see a lot of tech up north in Fort Collins, but really this channel between the Denver Tech Center, Greenwood Village, which is just south of Denver, stretching up, heading northwest into Boulder, there is just a, a wealth of tech companies within those regions, Greenwood Village, the heart of Denver, up through Broomfield, getting into Boulder where Google has a headquarters. So if you are in the tech industry or interested in the tech industry, there is going to be a lot, perhaps a plethora of opportunities in the tech space. And that's uh, built between national or, or you know global companies, as well as again, these, these uh, startups that have begun in Colorado and grown. Now, the second reason should probably be pretty obvious and that is, Colorado's beautiful, the weather for the most part is dope, and if you like your seasons, you have it here. So you see the natural beauty of Colorado, especially for those who have not seen mountains like the Rocky Mountains. And you know, we take it for granted, I'll, I'll fully admit. I see the Rocky Mountains on a daily basis and it just kind of glazes over my head how wonderful it is until you reach certain peaks. But coming out here, seeing the vision. We talk about 300 days of sunshine. Uh, that's a loose statistic. It's, it's really around 240, 250 clear sky days, but you see the sun. You get some element of sun, an average of 300 days out of the year. Uh, for any of my Midwest people, I lived in the Midwest for a few years myself, you're gonna like how much sunshine there is here. And then you talk about the health and wellness asset to that. So because of how you know, nature-based we are, there's hiking, biking, kayaking, camping, all sorts of outdoor activities 
that people are going to want to explore. And that doesn't just include, uh, you know, getting into the mountains, that's walking through different towns. It's really enjoying uh, the nature of the state in general. And you'll feel, uh, especially in, in certain communities, for Collins, Boulder come to mind right off the bat, uh, Highlands Ranch, these communities that really take health to another level, where they really want to be active. There's a lot of groups doing different things. Again, whether you're a runner, a walker, a mountain biker, a street biker, you name it, there's something for you. So health, wellness, fitness is a, is a big thing in Colorado. The third thing, and certainly something important to a, a lot of folks that I have talked to about moving here, is is the educational. I'd say educational excellence of Colorado, and that's not just you know in in the universities here. We've got some very promising universities, uh, including the University of Colorado. You've got Colorado State University. Then you have closer to Denver, you've got the School of Mines out in Golden, a highly regarded engineering school. And then you've got the University of Denver or DU. See, we, we, we do that with both. The University of Colorado is CU. The University of Denver is DU. We just like to flip-flop things. Uh, but DU, a, a gorgeous campus, highly regarded, great great for business, law, medical, I mean, I shouldn't say medicine. That's, that's not correct. That's a CU thing. But uh, some amazing colleges to go to. I'm just gonna blabber here momentarily on education, but also that ranges not just from the universities in which you have many options throughout the state, uh, but also going into you know our, our, our public schools. And you'll see a lot of our school districts uh, here, uh, again, along the Front Range, getting into the mountains that are highly rated uh, from a national standpoint. For that, you'll definitely want to check out uh, websites like betterschools.com, niche.com to give you an idea. But schools in Colorado overall receive very high ratings. And then as you get past high school, if college is the thing, you've got plenty of options there as well. The fourth thing, and this is something that I had a lot of friends and clients that have moved here bring up to me, was the renewable energy progress that Colorado is making, that that's a very important factor in Colorado's development. Now, uh, I understand that there are certain elements of renewable energy that you know, people love to debate. I'm not here to debate it necessarily. Lord knows I'll get your comments anyway. Uh, but that is something that Colorado takes very seriously. It's something we've made a lot of progress in, and it plays a role in our economic development. There are companies here uh, you know, making strides towards that objective. So it definitely plays a big role for the state as a whole. Number five, and again, this was something that, you know, just talking to, to clients and friends throughout the state and really getting into the, to the Rockies, they talked about the thriving art scene. And I would say art and music. Now, I, I could definitely say you see that in Denver. You see our museums, you see our art exhibits, uh, and you see how many different music venues there are in the Denver Metro and stretching out. But again, that really goes everywhere. You'll see different art and music festivals going on in the mountains. You'll see galleries uh, for different art exhibits all over the place. You'll see whether it is large scale, medium, or these you know intimate musical uh, settings where you know great bands, whether they're local, national, you name it. Uh, but the music scene, the art scene has really made uh, just this advance over the last, I'd say five to 10 years, especially here throughout Colorado. And again, not just a, a Denver hub thing. Jumping ahead, we had a kind of a combo there for five and six with, with art and music. Number seven, we're talking about this movement of uh, organic foods, local farms, really this farm to table movement you're, you're seeing a, a lot of. Uh, something I really enjoy about, you see it throughout the Denver Metro, you, and again, you see it in Boulder, you see it in Fort Collins, you see it in Greeley, Brighton, is how many farmers markets you see. So basically, as soon as uh, you know some of these local farmers have uh, produce to bring, you'll see these farmer markets start opening at some point in the spring. Uh, they, they range uh, really into the fall at that point. And so there uh, is really this movement for, for locally grown organic food, the opportunity to bring that to your table uh, and, and not just in, in produce, that's you know also local meat markets, uh, things of that nature. You see a, a lot that's important to a lot of the people in the local communities. Number eight, and, and again, something that I get a lot of positive feedback on is the diverse housing options that you have here in Colorado on the different dynamics of how you might wanna live. So I'll have, as an example, I'll have clients who, who reach out to me and they wanna move closer to one of our city hubs, whether it's a Denver, a Colorado Springs, 
Boulder is is really a, a, a cool town. I don't know if I'd call it a city, kind of borders on that. Uh, Fort Collins is, is a city with kind of a town feel to it, but they want to be closer to these hubs. And then others that want to be a little more sprawled. They want to be away from cities a bit. They don't mind making, you know, if they're going to go to the city, they don't mind a 45 minute, hour, hour and a half drive. And so you also have the ability to be, again, in the city, deep in the suburbs. And if you're into mountain living, the ability to get into mountain towns that are still close to cities where you're not completely isolated. And if you want isolation in the mountains, there's that too. You have this range also of homes with, with rich history. You're talking, you know, centuries old plus to brand new construction. And, and again, ranging throughout the state, uh, obviously the Rocky Mountains themselves and getting into those will have more specifics than, than your towns in the front range and in your plains uh, per se, but so many different housing options. Um, affordability, uh, you know, will vary. We'll, we'll talk about that as we get into the second half of this video. Uh, but, you know, the options that you have, whether again, you are looking for your, your detached house, your townhome, your condo, uh, your tall apartment building, whether you want to be in the thick of things in the city, suburbs, mountains, you, you name it, Colorado has it. And number nine of these of these positives, if you will, is the rich history of Colorado. And I think you'll sense that. You'll see it in a lot of our front range towns getting in the mountains. You'll feel the, the Native American roots. You'll feel uh, the gold rush. You'll see a lot of these various museums and landmarks uh, that, that signify this. Uh, so just so much history about how this state uh, and, and, the, and the towns and cities in it evolved. Uh, it, it's great to explore, it's great to experience, and, and I think you'll really get a sense for that as you do. And number 10, it kind of our last positive, is the amount of entre entrepreneurial spirit, if I could get my mouth to work, here in Colorado. I mentioned earlier the amount of tech startups you see in Colorado, but I think Colorado has really made movements to help entrepreneurs launch to to entice them to come here whether whether they're from here or they're moving here it's enticing them to come here it's incentivizing them to come here and build their business here so you see that again not just in the denver metro you see that throughout the state especially throughout the front range you know again going up to to fort collins a windsor a loveland stretching all the way down longmont denver colorado springs pueblo castle rock in between uh just a lot of options there that entrepreneurial spirit is here and it's very strong. Now, obviously, for reasons that you might want to move somewhere, there's got to be reasons that you might not. So if we're going to get real about reasons you might not want to move to Colorado, first and foremost, you're going to want to take a deep dive into the cost of living and housing affordability here in Colorado. Certain areas will have more affordability than others, but we have seen dramatic increases in our cost of living and specifically in housing in the Denver metro area, in Colorado Springs. Certainly your mountain towns uh, saw a dramatic increase in their affordability, uh, specifically in 2020 and 2021, but that's still lasting. So there are uh, challenges in those areas. So when it comes to housing, whether you are buying or renting and understanding uh, the affordability challenges that you may have. So certainly if we're thinking statewide, a lot of different options, but that's the first, uh, kind of the first two negatives, if you will, or things that you need to be very well aware of. Second thing, and, and you know, this is certainly more of a, of a Denver Metro thing, but it affects Colorado Springs, for instance, and it certainly affects uh, travelers going uh, up and down I-70, uh, getting through the Rockies, and that's traffic congestion. As Colorado has grown, uh, our infrastructure has not necessarily been able to keep up with it or is is not able to at the end of the day there's only uh, so much territory you can only expand lanes so much so traffic congestion is one that is going to to, to cause some people some consternation uh, i think that is more of a denver metro area situation um, you know i don't think necessarily depending on where you are in the mountains that you're going to be routinely caught in traffic on i-70 can certainly impact skiers and people heading up to the mountains for a, a fun weekend but i think that traffic congestion is mainly going to be around uh, your, your metro hubs, Denver uh, and, and Colorado Springs to be your top two. 
I would tie three and four together to an extent. So number three, we'd talk about water scarcity. And, and while Colorado, I think overall is in uh, at least decent shape compared to others, you know, water rights nationwide are, are, are getting trickier and trickier. And that's part of the reason that you'll see uh, a, a lack of development in certain areas. And there are certainly challenges that Colorado is going to face. So water scarcity uh, is a big one. Uh, I think playing off of that, uh, not that one is specific to the other, but th the fourth would be our air quality here. And when I talk about air quality here, it's, it's almost, it's not almost, it, it can be heartbreaking. So, uh, you know, Denver is known for it's, it's great, you know, beauty and scene, the mountains, and, and Denver's a great looking city. Uh, we've had a lot of smog the last, uh, you know, several years. Uh, we've had a lot of, of you know, we, we like to blame it on smoke coming from fires in California and Canada, but just overall, the air quality of Denver uh, has, has not been very good for multiple years and something that, uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully improves. And again, there's, there's, there's work being done, uh, but, that is a, a, an issue. Tying into all of those, you know, water, air quality, uh, part of that goes back to uh, also uh, wildfire risks. Now, you know, this is not going to, wildfire risks are not gonna impact somebody moving to the Denver Metro, odds are. Uh, but somebody that might be moving to Colorado Springs, Colorado Springs had some pretty uh, nasty wildfires in the last several years. Um, as you get west of Denver, you get into areas like Golden, you get you know into areas like Evergreen, mountains. Uh, certainly, if you are thinking mountains, wildfires are going to be something that you might you're at risk of it, but it could impact you. It could impact the cost of your insurance on the place. It could affect uh, affordability there. So something that we want to keep in mind. And, you know, we, we talk about Colorado and all the things that people like to do, you know, whether you're getting into the mountains, whether you're, you're skiing or snowboarding, you're hiking, um, you're, you're, you know, getting out and about, or whether you, maybe you're in a town and you're going to museums, you're going to see a show. Because of Colorado's growth, you're also seeing larger crowds at all of these things. You will routinely see uh, lines at certain uh, at certain uh, ski resorts where you know that that ski line, that lift line, is crazy. Uh, you go on a hike, and there's a lot of people potentially on that hike when there uh, wouldn't have been in the past. Uh, and again, maybe you're going to, to museums or different events, and, and they're a bit more crowded than they were. So. Is that gonna impact you on every single time, all the time? No, but it is something that gets brought up quite a bit that, that crowds in, in general, uh, that's tourists and locals uh, are increasing. And a couple to, to close out. Um, you know, one thing that, that people even living in, you know, the Denver Metro, even living in uh, maybe a Boulder, a Colorado Springs, a Fort Collins, one thing you will routinely hear uh, is that you're, you're probably going to need a car. There's a, a heavier than maybe normal, I shouldn't say than normal, but if you're coming from a setting where you didn't need a vehicle, odds are in Colorado, if you really wanna get around and do the things you wanna do, you're going to need a vehicle. Uh, I, I don't think that that tends to impact most people. Most people expect to have a car or expect to need a car, but for those of you who are trying to avoid that, it's gonna you're gonna be in specific regions. You're gonna be as close, odds are you're gonna be as close to a, a downtown or city region as you can to have you know the amenities you need around you. You know, plan on needing a car otherwise. And then the last two that I would combine together uh, are that we are seeing an increase in both property taxes and insurance costs. And those insurance costs are not just on homes. We're seeing homeowners insurance costs go up. We're seeing property tax increases go up. We're also seeing car insurance go up uh, significantly. A lot of that, you know, housing uh, in insurance is due to hail uh, in a lot of instances and then wildfire if, if it applies to the region that that home is in. And then for cars, uh, certainly hail has played a role. And listen, I mean, we're seeing a, a an insurance crisis. I don't think I'm exaggerating. An insurance crisis nationwide. So certainly Colorado is not uh, exempt from that or, you know, is not the the, the, the break from that rule. Uh, but you can expect that maybe the property taxes and homeowners and, and, and car insurance that you're seeing now may increase as we move forward. So overall, is Colorado still the place to live? Hey, listen, at least according to me, my friends, my clients, my family, basically anybody I know, pretty freaking cool. So certainly a place I would explore 
And if you have questions about it, that's the perfect opportunity to hit me up. My phone number, my email on your screen. Know that I am always the person answering those phone calls, answering those texts, answering those emails there when and if you need me. This is Destination Denver, Colorado. I'm your host, Jimmy Everett. That was, is moving to Colorado in 2024 the right move for you? Until I see you next time, peace.